Afternoon folks. I'm just going to quickly look at some of these effects 360 link plugin with console and Studio One. So you can see on the screen here what I've got. I've got console open. I've got a track here, which is a drum loop track on the yellow one. And I've got two red tracks next to it, which we know now are effects tracks because they are a different color, generally a different color. The knobs and controls are be the same color or very similar, although uh, the background to the track is different. And that's to me what tells us it's an effects track or it's certainly not one of the audio tracks. And in Studio One over here, which I'm using, you can see here is my audio track, which is a drum loop. And here are two effects tracks, which I've set up in Studio One. Now what I did, I set these up and I dragged in instances of SSL 360 onto each one in the inserts at the top here that then when I do that and I enable and I put the sends to those in my audio track here I get two sends come up on SSL console here now I can't control these from the UC one which is what I'm using I can only control those from my fader port which are it's here which yes, I can control the two sends from the fader port or from SSL control surface, whatever the number is, UF1 or something. So not that it matters. We're not talking about that particularly. We're talking about what happens when you use your effects in this way. So I've created two effects channels here. One is reverb. I'll show you which reverb in a minute. And one is delay. Now I've named them at the bottom here, as you can see, and that is reflected in the SSL console here. It doesn't change them at the top. The top right up here always seems to say what plugin you've put in, whatever it might be. I've decided to opt to, to make my effects channels red here so we know they're both effects, but I would have known anyway, like I say, from the background. So at the moment, let's just play the drum loop. Now you can see with this drum loop from a UC1 on the EQ, um, I can alter the EQ using the UC1. That's fine. I could alter the uh, anything I want, the dynamics also, all from the UC1. Now, if I flick over using the UC1, flick over to this effects track here, you can see it changes in the in console and it changes in my DAW. I'm now looking at the reverb effect track. It's a couple of things I've done differently between the reverb and the delay, as you can see here. The reverb has controls all the way down, um, which are effectively these controls at the top section here are the right hand side of the UC1, and the controls at the bottom are the left hand side of the UC1, as you can tell by the colors. On the delay effects, I've only used the right hand side of the UC one. I'll tell you why in a second. So let's just see, let's just try and add some reverb and see what happens. So let's go back to our main track. I'm gonna go down to the sends and I'm gonna to send to the reverb. So you can hear that's clearly the reverb, which is this track here. Now, now we've got a send going on. If I look at my what I've mapped up here, if we open the reverb up quickly, if this opens the, the 360 plugin, so we can see what I've mapped to where. So you can see that I've mapped some of the left hand side parameters here and some of the right hand side parameters here. And if I alter one of these here, look, the uh, input gain at the top, it alters it on the plugin. And if I was to open up the plugin here on the right hand side of the plugin is input one. So you can see that altering here, here, and here. Now I could map all of these to, to whatever I want. For example, if I go to the to the right hand to the left hand side here, I've altered some of the EQ settings down here. I think I've even man I've even done a fader. Yeah, I've mapped a fader there to a controller on this is this controller here, look, on the plugin. So that's all good and it all works. There is a little bit of flicking around. If you've got all this on one screen like I have, 
there's a little bit of flicking around as to whether you're clicking on your DAW screen or whether you're on the SSL screen as to what shows up and what doesn't. Obviously, if I wanted a different plugin, I could go to here, I could select from my plugin library and then remap whatever I want to do. If I want to add some mapping functions, I click on the little cog symbol on the left hand, on the right hand side there, and all of the options come up for me to map a button or a controller to here. So that's our reverb. So we've got some reverb. We've sent it from here. It's reflected in my DAW here, and we're getting reverb on the track. Now, obviously, I can alter those settings from my UC1 now up here. You can see that happening. I can do lots of things. And I can, I can amend all those things. So let's go over onto the delay. I'm going to turn the send down. I'll show you why this is scrolling up and down in a minute. Let's go to the delay. So you can see I'm using Echo Boy on this. Again, I've, I've only used the right-hand side of the UC1 this time just to map two or three parameters, one of them being the mix here, as you can see. If I just scroll this up here, you can see the mix function here, the mix function here, and the mix function here, all working together. I've mapped the saturation, which is there, there, and over here. And I've mapped the feedback, which is there, there, and here. Again, I could map other buttons if I want, but I'm not going to the time being. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because I got a little confused at first, or I think it could be confusing, even though, even though I know these are effects tracks. The fact that these have got these red and green buttons, if I added more, they'd be blue and black and all the rest of it. I just feel like if I'm messing with effects, I don't really want to be looking at this EQ section here. So if I hide the EQ section in the SSL console, I'm now only looking at the sends and the set and the effects that I'm sending to. So if we turn both of them up and play it, just turn the volume down a bit. We can see that now I've got this open. I can I can play with. either of these things just using just using the right hand side of my UC1 now I find that a little bit easy the right hand side gives me seven rotary parameters to play with and a number of buttons to turn things on and off I can't see me wanting to do too much more than that unless I'm in a, a serious EQ type scenario to top all that off, so that, that's how I'm using it, and that's how I'm going to try and use it. The other thing I'm finding is that when I started doing this demo, I had a, a multiple, I had a full session on here, sort of a set of drums, I had a load of guitars, vocals, all sorts. And when you start having that many tracks, you start adding third-party effects in, and it creates all of these channels. If I put another two or three in here now, that will create all of these. That's an awful lot of channels to be having on screen at one time. And I really don't think it's going to be very user friendly. I think they need to think about being able to either collapse some of this or to show just the effects or some form of screen control as to what you're looking at, what you want to look at. It is complex and I'm not sure which is the best way to go. I'd be interested to know how you're doing it, what you're doing, um, to be able to see exactly what you're doing all the time here, maybe be able to make the strips narrower so you can still see the faders, but what do you think? Let me know, I'll be interested. I'm gonna do a separate video on putting effects on the inserts of your audio track up here. Just one thing to note again, as we've said before, in order for anything to show up on the SSL console, you need to have either 360 link or an SSL plugin that is compatible with this on your track. If you take it off the track, it'll disappear. Okay, guys, let me know what you think.